Hey guys, I hope you've had a good week. Maybe you've had a chance to do some of the activities on our youth bingo board. Remember, there are prizes up for grabs. So if you're keen to join in with us on that, uh, that picture of our bingo board is up on our Max and Youth Facebook pages. So either you or your folks can get in on that. Uh, feel free to send me an email or a text uh, if you can't find it. But hopefully you've had some fun doing one or two of those things this week. You remember that we're in the midst of a series where we're exploring some of the impacts of Jesus' resurrection. And we're asking the question, if Jesus has been raised to life and offers us new life as well, what does that mean for us? What are some of the characteristics of what that new life looks at, looks like? We've looked at a couple of those traits already, thankfulness, faithfulness, and today, we're looking at the character trait of peace. All throughout scripture, God is described as a God of peace. He's one who brings peace, who is a peaceful guy, he has a character of peace. Uh, the Holy Spirit is often described as uh, part of the Trinity who brings peace to us. So we're going to explore that a little bit together. If God is peace, if God has the character trait of peace, what might it be for us to be people who take on that similar character, a character of peace? There's a passage in Romans uh, that I want to read for you, the end of Romans 4, start of Romans 5, that talks about how we can have peace with God because of Jesus, that the peace of God comes upon us and that our relationship with him is restored because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let me read it for you. Paul, the author of Romans, uh, is talking about what it is to be, to believe in Jesus, the one who is raised from the dead. He says of Jesus, Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This part of the book, Paul is talking about the fact that Jesus has died and has been raised to life. And that means that we can be back in right relationship with God. And that relationship is one that he describes of, that he describes as full of peace. Paul is talking about here in Romans that we get peace with God because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. So as we gather together on Thursday night, as we chat about this a little bit more, we're going to explore what it means that if we now have peace with God, what does that look like for our life? And I think there are two main things that it looks like. I think it means that we have peace within ourselves, that we can be at peace, that we can be people of joy, uh, people of peace because of what Jesus has done for us. And I think it also means that we get to have peace with other people, that we end up being people who work for peace, uh, who work to restore relationships with one another, uh, to restore uh, peace to our world, even in our little corner of it. So I want to read two passages for you now. And I want to invite you to think about these passages, uh, either with your family today or over the next couple of days. Uh, and we'll chat more about them on Thursday. Have a look at these two passages and think a little bit about what it might be for us to be people of peace, people who uh, are so infected by the life of Christ that the peace that he offers to us, that the peace of God kind of seeps out into all kinds of ways for us. So the first passage uh, is in the book of Philippians, which is a letter that Paul wrote uh, to the people of Philippi. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, this is what Paul says. So Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The second passage that I want to invite you guys to explore this week is in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 14 to 18. 
This is what it says. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So friends, those passages were Philippians 4, 6 to 7 and Romans 12, 14 to 18. Let me invite you to have a little bit of an, another read of them, have a bit of a think about what those passages are saying, what they're calling us to do. What is it for us to now be people of peace? We'll chat more about that on Thursday night. Let me also invite you, though, to ask the question, why do you think that peace is one of these traits of the new resurrection life? Why do you think we, uh, as people who share in the life of Jesus, end up being people of peace? So two things. Have a look over those passages. Uh, explore a little bit about what you think it might be for us to be people of peace. And then ask the question, why? Why do you think peace is one of those traits that we get to put on as part of our new resurrection life, as we share in the good things that Jesus has achieved for us on the cross? Guys, I hope you enjoy either chatting with those, about those things with your families or getting to explore together. We'll chat more about it on Thursday night. So I look forward to seeing you then uh, or at our game time on Tuesday. May the peace of God be with you this week.